So today we're gonna to talk about the biggest mistake that companies that focus predominantly on insurance claims um, and restoration make when trying to get into the retail market. As we all know, things are changing in the insurance industry. This is what I'm told by, you know, you roofers. And a lot of more people are trying to transition into a retail model. And what that requires is, as opposed to just door knocking or relying on traditional means that are generating opportunities for insurance claims, doing things that are more aligned with generating leads from marketing and advertising. So things like Google search. One of the biggest pitfalls that I see when companies are making this transition is that they put somebody who is very, very adept and very productive on the insurance claim side of things, and they're their top performer, their top sales rep, if you will, into a position without the proper training to sell retail roofing contracts. And it is nowhere near the same. Think of it. There's an art form, and I'm not dismissing how challenging it is to door knock and to get claims filed, etc. But you're going into a situation where you're selling them, the homeowner, something that's ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars of value for five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, three thousand dollars. So you're giving them a massive discount and incentive to purchase the roof from you as a result of their insurance claim. Let's be honest, it's, it's not the same type of sales, right? Versus in a retail environment, you've got, let's say a homeowner goes on Google and they're looking for best roofing contractor near me. They're going through the results. Uh, they pick you, they call you. There's several, there's several different components of this journey that are super, super important. One, what is it they see when they're exposed to you online? Once they reach out to you, what is that intake process? Like, what is their experience when they're dealing with whoever it is that's answering the phone? What questions are being asked? How are we positioning that sales rep? And then ultimately, when that sales rep gets there, like, what does that conversation look like? Do you have a bulletproof sales process that's going to do things like, isolate their different pain points, magnify these pain points, systematically get their buy-in and trial closed throughout that sales process to where you're proactively pulling out the objections, answering questions that they have, and getting that customer to acknowledge that, in fact, you would be a good fit because this is how you would solve that issue. Um, because then when you get to the end of the conversation and inevitably, you know, the I've got to think about it or, I've got to talk it over with my wife comes about, you're now equipped to circle back into the point of the conversation where you've already addressed it and had that conversation. Like those are the type of objections that are not going to be present in the insurance claims process. Like if we're door knocking, getting inspections, that route, um, it's a completely different sale. And so if you treat your leads that are coming from Google or advertising the same way that you do um, from the leads that you're generating through insurance claims, door knocking, uh, you know, and that type of, of marketing, you're going to be very disappointed with the outcome. I had a client a couple years back, they were making this transition uh, into more retail and you know, they wanted to cancel after a few months. And when I asked why, it was simply because it just wasn't working the way they thought it would. So the primary vehicle that we used to deliver opportunities to this customer was Google Local Services or Google Guaranteed. If you're not doing it, regardless of the type of roofing company you are, you should do it. Um, click the link down below and you can get enrolled today. But this is a fixed cost per lead platform and typically it's significantly cheaper than let's say Google Ads or other alternatives. So it's very, very nice and can be very productive. This particular client had 200 leads over the course of three or four months. And you know what I wanted to do is I wanted to listen to these calls. Like what is happening that we're not getting sales because 200 leads is a lot of leads not to feel as if this campaign's productive. So we spot monitored the calls. And they received calls, one of them I remember vividly um, was, you know, the homeowner called and said, we had this fixed last year, but the, the wall's still leaking, so the issue's obviously still there. We know it's gonna cost more, but we wanna make sure that, you know, we get it done the right way. Now, the salesperson that was in charge of this lead was historically the best closer and the highest producer for that company. Uh, you know, so I asked them like what happened with this lead, right? Because for me, that's a golden opportunity. They're confessing they went the cheap route. So they're, they're, they're 
explicitly saying they're okay with paying more. So like, what more could you ask for out of this situation? When I asked the, the sales rep about it, you know, he couldn't recall. So I said, okay, let's pull up your CRM. Let's see what happened with the lead. There was no record of it in the CRM. So there was never an opportunity for this, this prospect, this high quality prospect to actually become a paying customer. Um, and because of that, and, and that wasn't an isolated instance, they saw no value in the leads that were coming in. So we have to be intentional about creating systems and processes around how we're generating leads. And, and that can change from each marketing medium, right? So it could be Facebook, it could be Google, it could be HomeAdvisor, but understanding contextually where we're bringing in the customers from, what our process is for that marketing medium to make sure that we're consistently optimizing that process to get the most out of every dollar that we're putting out for advertising. So uh, I'm sure there'll be some comments, drop them below, share this with somebody that would help and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Five, four, three, two, one, zero.